susceptible or resistant? When it comes to treating bacterial infections, the answer is crucial. In the clinic, microbiologists test bacterial isolates from patients to determine whether they are susceptible or resistant to a given antibiotic. The downside, clinical testing methods can take up to two days, during which patients may be treated with suboptimal antibiotics. But artificial intelligence could help. Scientists are finding ways to use AI and machine learning to develop testing tactics that are easy, accurate, and quick. Welcome to Microbial Minutes, the American Society for Microbiology's update on what's hot in the microbial sciences. I'm Madeline Barron, Science Communication Specialist at ASM. Before we dive into today's video, please take a moment to fill out the survey linked in the description. It's five questions, takes less than three minutes, and your answers will help us make better videos. We appreciate the support. So when a patient has a bacterial infection, the bacterium is isolated from the patient, identified, and tested against different antibiotics. This process is called antimicrobial susceptibility testing, or AST. There are a couple of classic methods by which AST is done, including disc diffusion and broth microdilution assays. In the first, discs containing antibiotic are placed upon a lawn of bacteria on an agar plate and the zone of inhibition measured. In broth microdilution assays, an isolate is cultured with different dilutions of an antibiotic. The lowest concentration of the antibiotic that inhibits bacterial growth is known as the minimum inhibitory concentration, or MIC. The MIC, or zone of inhibition, is then compared against predetermined ranges of antibiotic concentrations, known as breakpoints, that classify the organism as susceptible or resistant. Depending on the findings, healthcare providers can develop treatment regimens to effectively manage an individual patient's infection. Though highly standardized and widely used, standard AST methods have some limitations, including turnaround time. From sampling to results, it can take 18 to 48 hours to complete AST, maybe longer depending on the bacterium. During this time, patients usually receive broad-spectrum antibiotics until clinicians can create a more tailored treatment approach. These antibiotics are disruptive to the patient's microbiome, which plays a key role in health, and may be suboptimal for the patient's infection. They are also important players in the spread of antimicrobial resistance. However, while these tactics still dominate the AST world, there are commercial and or automated systems that help mitigate some of the downsides and reduce turnaround time, and still more under development. This includes emerging systems that capitalize on the rapidly developing field of artificial intelligence. Which brings us to a recent study published in Communications Biology in which scientists developed a method that couples AI with microscopy to characterize bacterial susceptibility to antibiotics in as little as 30 minutes. Notably, it can detect susceptibility at the single cell level. Now, why would that matter? Well, traditional AST tactics look at an entire bacterial population or community, but many clinical isolates contain subpopulations of cells that are more resistant to a given antibiotic than the larger population. These small, stubborn groups can promote drug resistance and treatment failure. Detecting them is key as it may be that a mix of antibiotics are needed to treat an infection. Honing in on antibiotic susceptibility and resistance at the single cell level could inform how best to handle this heterogeneity. With that, there are various candidates for single cell ASTs, some of which rely on microscopy to detect changes in the growth or motility patterns of bacteria depending on if they are susceptible or resistant to an antibiotic. Others look for phenotypic changes like those in the cell membrane or bacterial chromosome, which can occur in response to antibiotic treatment. This is an underlying principle of this recent study. The method involves treating bacterial cultures with high concentrations of an antibiotic to produce distinct, visible cellular changes in the chromosome. The cells are fixed, fluorescently stained, and imaged. These images are then fed into a deep learning pipeline. Deep learning is a form of machine learning, which itself is a subset of AI that mimics how the human brain works. It learns by example, identifying patterns and predicting outcomes from lots of data via artificial neural networks. For example, deep learning models may be given an image of a car and based on what it knows about features of cars, determine if the image is in fact a car. In this case, the computational pipeline is trained on many micrograph images. It learns what a susceptible and resistant cell looks like based on their chromosome before and after treatment and can then classify cells in an unknown sample. The scientists put the method to the test with E. coli. Cultures of the bacterium were treated with four antibiotics with different mechanisms of action, ciprofloxacin, gentamicin, coamoxiclav, and rifampicin, the first three of which are clinically relevant for E. coli. 
each caused different changes in the bacterial chromosome. For example, treatment with concentrations of gentamicin and ciprofloxacin that exceed the MIC for each drug caused the chromosome to compact, albeit in slightly different ways. Untreated cells were used to show what a resistant chromosome looks like. Across all conditions, the deep learning pipeline, trained on images with nearly 30,000 individual cells, could classify cells as susceptible or resistant with over 84% single cell accuracy. The system performed well for E. coli clinical isolates too, and reflected classifications defined by MICs used in clinical microbiology labs. To that end, when isolates with varying MICs for ciprofloxacin were incubated with different concentrations of the drug for 30 minutes, the results were consistent with a 24-hour growth curve assay. That is, at concentrations below the MIC, shown here with the dashed lines, when cell growth was uninhibited in the growth assay, the platform identified more resistant than susceptible cells because they could survive at that concentration. Near and above the MIC, when growth dropped off, the ratio of susceptible to resistant cells increased. Based on these data, the researchers highlight that their system provided equivalent information in 30 minutes to gold standard bacterial growth assays with high accuracy at the single cell level. The system could be applied to a range of antimicrobials and bacterial species, though more work is required to increase scalability and establish the method as a reliable and clinically relevant AST. This includes determining how to apply those single cell data to inform treatment. Moreover, the method still relies on the use of bacterial cultures, which can be a time-intensive step, providing an opportunity to refine the method to minimize or mitigate this need, such as through using microfluidics. It's worth noting that this study is far from the only one incorporating AI into antimicrobial resistance detection. Some, for example, leverage AI to develop smartphone-based tools to aid in the interpretation of AST results, which helps reduce interoperable variability and with potential use in resource-limited settings. Others are exploring how to couple genomic sequencing data with AI to predict resistance in diverse bacterial pathogens. This is a particular benefit for organisms that are difficult to culture or grow slowly, like mycobacterium tuberculosis. There are also ways to link detection of genotype and phenotype with machine learning to enable rapid antibiotic susceptibility testing. Accurate tests, which inform smart antibiotic stewardship, are only part of the strategy for combating antimicrobial resistance. Another is discovering new antibiotics, an area where AI is being put to good use. Indeed, in a recent study, scientists used deep learning to identify a new class of antibiotics from nearly 12 million compounds with promising activity against methicillin-resistant Staphylococcus aureus, or MRSA. Ultimately, AI is becoming an important and evolving component of how we identify and manage resistant bacterial pathogens. So what are the main points we discussed today? Before we get into that, make sure you hit the subscribe button to get more microbial minutes, and don't forget to take the survey linked in the description. Okay, what did we learn? Well, determining whether a bacterium is susceptible or resistant to antibiotics is an important part of treating infections. Standard AST methods, like broth dilution and disc diffusion assays, work, but they can take a while. With the rise of AI, scientists are using machine learning to develop ways of detecting resistance in shorter periods of time, and even down to the single cell level. This is just one way in which AI is being leveraged amidst the growing antimicrobial resistance crisis. That's all for today. I'm Madeline Barron. I want to thank you for listening. Thank Ray Ortega for production, and I'll talk to you next time.